It is a wondrous autumn afternoon in the Smoky Mountains. They've come from near and far, and not since Davy Crockett has the state of Tennessee seen a bigger man on campus than Peyton Manning. Earlier today, his final walk down Gibbs Hall, down the hill. He said he wanted each moment frozen in time. Today, he brings the volunteers inside the big house before arguably the largest crowd in the history of college football. It's Vanderbilt and Tennessee. The moment they've all been waiting for. A father, a son, a ball, and a dream. Here with it, public address announcer Bobby Denton at Neyland Stadium. He came to UT from Asheville, North Carolina in 1995, bringing speed, power, a relentless pass rush for the Bob defense. He has five and a half sacks this season, 25 for his career, and is second on the all-time Tennessee sack list. Defensive end and linebacker, welcome number one, Leonard Little. Okay. Here we go. He holds every Tennessee single game season and career passing mark. The Boss are 37-5 since he became the starting quarterback in his freshman season in 1994. Football News All-America, SEC Player of the Year, National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete, quarterback from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 16, Peyton Manning. March 5th when Manning made his decision, Philip Fulmer had no idea that his volunteers would have a chance at an SEC or a national title. Here come the volunteers. The number one defense in the SEC, number eight in the country, Woody Woodenhofer's Vanderbilt Commodores. everyone, I'm Tim Brando. You know that monumental decision that we were talking about with Manning Bank back in March? Now suddenly, it's all in front of him. A storybook ending, an SEC title, possibly a national championship, and how about a Heisman Trophy? Something they've never had at Tennessee. By my side is Ed Cunningham. And Ed, the irony here, the team that has given Manning the most fits during his career, the Vanderbilt Commodores. He's got to get through them first. And head coach Phil Fulmer realizes the size of this game, and he has spelled it out to his team. He's not holding anything back from them. They realize Manning is the big story, but they have to focus on Vanderbilt. Manning's had huge numbers throughout his whole career, but he has struggled every time he's played against Vanderbilt. In the last two times that they've met, he has failed to throw a touchdown pass. The reason that defense for Vanderbilt is so good is they can play all kinds of man-to-man -man coverage. Corey Chavis, also a senior who let uh, the dreams of playing in the NFL go last spring to return to Vanderbilt, he came back and really helped this defense. And you can see why that they are one of the best defenses in the SEC. Vanderbilt and Tennessee. You want a Heisman? You want a possible shot at a national championship? You've got to beat your backyard neighbor first, and it's coming up next on CBS Sports. Wayne Goodrich, okay. The Vanderbilt Commodores will kick off. Tennessee won the toss. And back deep is Goodrich, who'll receive at the three-yard line. Cracked down at the 20-yard line, and that's where the Volunteers will take over first and 10. Peyton Manning, last week against Kentucky, had a marvelous showing, and he commented to us how important that the first trip out would be, the emotions running wild in this young man. This is not Kentucky's defense, though. Kentucky was 106th in the NCAA. This Vanderbilt defense is 8th. 
They'll begin out of an eye formation with the freshman sensation Lewis dotting the eye. Ahead for only about a yard, Batten, Raheem Batten comes up to make the stop. As you look at the starting lineups, our Bud Light lineups for Tennessee, they love to run to their left behind Clifton and Spencer Riley. Craig Teague has been their best at center. And the backs and receivers, the aforementioned Lewis, and of course Nash has been their big play receiver for the bulk of the year. Second down and nine. This time Manning rolls. Incomplete. Intended for Nash. Quality coverage by Fred Benson, the young corner out of North Augusta, South Carolina. As you look at Woody Woodenhopper's SEC top-rated defense, Stallworth has been the steadying influence for this team. Hall's the outstanding freshman. Arguably the best trio of linebackers in the country. Duncan the leader there. And the secondary led by the corners, both Javis and Benson, batting a big-time free safety. Reason this defense so good, their linebackers lead first and second in the SEC in tackle. Third down and nine, and you see already a number of men in the box for Vanderbilt. And here comes the blitz from Duncan. They get to him with a little help from Glenn Young. Just too many men for Tennessee to defend. And they come with an all-out blitz. Duncan leading the way with some help from Glenn Young, the senior from Detroit, number 55. You'll see Anthony Jordan lined up on the right side of your screen, defeats the block of the running back. He got the initial pressure, but then there's Jamie Duncan. Duncan, last year, led the SEC in tackles. This year, he's second behind his teammate, Carlton Hall. Chris Hogue will put it away, one of the 16 seniors on this Tennessee team. Alvin Duke is back deep, has it at midfield. Vanderbilt will have excellent field position down at the 41-yard line, and that's where the Commodores will take over first and 10, a 37-yard punt, an 11-yard return, and already this upstart bandy team with plenty of swagger. Here comes the crowd noise, though. Damian Allen's going to have a hard time all day long getting the snap count off. Senior from Strongsville, Ohio. They like to run him on sprint-out passes. Not really a proficient pocket passer. A couple of freshmen behind him, Jared McGrath and Jimmy Williams. Play fake. Allen looking deep for Yoder. Todd Yoder incomplete. Wayne Goodrich was back defending the sophomore from Oakland, Illinois, as Vanderbilt looks for the quick strike. A bit of a surprise on their opening play from scrimmage. And the starting lineup looks this way. Saltzman is the best young offensive lineman they had, but Barnett is their leader, the center, and Anguiano, the right guard. Among the backs, obviously, McGrath is a true freshman. Paul Morgan has been a steadying influence. Yoder has been their big play guy, and they already attempted a big play to him on the opening play from scrimmage. Second and ten. It's Morgan. Inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. The Tennessee defense. John Chavis, their defensive coordinator, very proud of what his team has done. Up front, Duff has been outstanding. Look for Jonathan Brown, an overlooked senior. When you have a Leonard Little, he does not get the publicity perhaps he deserves. The linebackers, Little moving from defensive end to middle linebacker because of some injuries. Al Wilson is back after an ankle problem for a couple of weeks. That's secondary, led by Noel, who'll come up and run support. Terry Fair, an outstanding cover corner. Third and seven. Out of the shotgun, it's the screen. Taken in by Duke. Negligible gain as the defensive support came from Raynock Thompson, number 46, the right side linebacker. Helped Buck by Buxton. Buck Buxton as well. Buck Buxton did a nice job pursuing from inside out on that play. That's what you got, have to have your defensive linemen do against that screen. Have them run it down. It's nice to see Al Wilson back from that ankle injury. On fourth down, they'll play field position and punt it away. Joe Webb will come in to do the honors. But again, Vanderbilt, they have struggled so much from an offensive standpoint. Their defense has had so much pressure this year to make plays to keep them in game. It's unfortunate they couldn't get much movement on that ball because, on that drive because they really could have used an early score against Tennessee. Very fair, drops back deep. They may take a penalty here just to give Webb a little more room for his punt. Take a delay of game. There's Woody Woodenhopper. One-time head coach at Missouri. Four Super Bowl rings as a coordinator for the Steelers during their Steel Curtain era. One of the brightest minds 
of defense of football at any level. Impressive statistic. He coached 19 Pro Bowlers while he was a coach in the NFL. And uh, Philip Fulmer. All he's done is win 83% of his games. And I submit to you, he has more pressure on him right now than any of the 112 Division I-A coaches in college football. Webb angling it for the Kaufman corner. Oh, and it gets an outstanding bounce. And Benson right down there at the one-yard line to touch it. Job well done. A nice idea taking the delay of game penalty. 39-yard punt. Tennessee will start from their patio here at the big house when we come back to Knoxville. Just underway in Knoxville. Tim Brando along with Ed Cunningham. Tennessee with the ball just outside their one-yard line, their second offensive series of the afternoon. We'll call it the two. Lewis up to the four-yard line. One aspect of this Vanderbilt defense that's been so outstanding against Tennessee is their defense of the run, but they didn't have to defend Jamal Lewis the last two years. Jamal Lewis has been such a nice that's surprise for Tennessee. Came in as a true freshman, and they weren't sure about his protection as they ran their schemes on offense. And it took about four games for him to get it. Once he got it, he is now the leading freshman rusher in the NCAA. Douglas High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Second down and seven. Lewis again, met by Duncan. How do you do from the senior? Jamal Lewis. You look at the SEC leading rushers, Kevin Falk of LSU. Many of you saw him yesterday against Arkansas. Fred Taylor of Florida, considered a Heisman candidate at the beginning of the year. He's the first true freshman in Tennessee history to rush over 1,000 yards. And the amazing thing is he didn't even play very much in the first three games. He only had 62 total yards rushing in their first three contests. Third down and seven. Goes again. They stay with him in the extra effort. Nets him the 10, but still a good yard and a half shy of the first down as Duncan and Anthony Jordan, 27, collaborate. You know, in talking to Philip Fulmer, he told us that Vanderbilt has a lot of schemes on defense. They back their linebackers in and out, but the most amazing thing they do on defense is they don't miss tackles, and you've seen that so far in this game. Jamal Lewis, a big guy at 220 pounds, and Fulmer said, look, they just don't miss tackles. When they get a hold of you, you're going down to the ground. Hogue again to punt it away from his end zone. And Alvin Duke back deep, standing at midfield. Vanderbilt had the ball at their 42, or the Tennessee 42, on their opening series. This punt, a better one, but still plenty of room for Duke. And he'll be near the 42-yard line as a late flag comes down. As Duke goes down, 40-yard punt, 7-yard return. Let's check the flag. Bill Goss is our referee. Uh, he could not find his white hat when he left the hotel earlier this morning, but he now has it. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Penalty will be 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. With as tough a time as Woody's uh, offense has had this year, that's a huge penalty. Takes them to the other side of the 50. Big part of the uh, battle they're having in field position right now. But again, good field position when we come back. We're tied at nothing. Back at Neyland Stadium, the third member of our broadcast team is Mike Harris. And, uh, Mike, I know you were in Woody Woodenhopper's locker room prior to the start of today's game. Well, Coach Woody uh, Woodenhopper told his team, look, you know Tennessee's all concerned with senior day, about the national championship, the Heisman Trophy, and just about everything else involved with Peyton Manning. He said, well, we have a senior day today and win this game for our seniors. We lost here two years ago, 12-7. to 7. He said, we can beat these guys. Uh, he truly believes it, and he has some seniors that are very confident, particularly on the defensive side. Corey Chavis, the guy we talked about at the Open, said this is the game, this is the reason that he came back for his senior year. From the Vanderbilt 48, first and 10, Allen in trouble. He can be resourceful back here. He puts it on the ground. Tennessee's got it. is down there as is Corey Terry the volunteers get the first turnover of the game 
biggest problem for Vanderbilt on offense this year has been turnovers. They are minus 15 on the year in turnover ratio, and you're going to see why right here. You can see Allen's got the ball. He doesn't tuck it away properly. They have dropped a lot of footballs this year. With two weeks of prep time, we were told by their coaches they worked on tucking that ball away. Obviously, they didn't work hard enough at it. It was Goodrich that came away with it. First and 10 for the Volunteers at midfield. Lewis off the left side. That's Tennessee's favorite side in the running game, running behind Riley and Clifton. Ahead to the Vanderbilt 46, Anthony Jordan making the stop. If you're a little surprised when you're watching this game and you say, well, Manning's only had one drop back pass, one play action, reason being they know how good this Vanderbilt defense is. And, and all the Tennessee offensive coach told us they're going to use Jamal Lewis to set up Peyton Manning, not the other way around. They have to establish the run early against this attack style defense. Lewis has carried five times for 13 yards at second and six. Play back to Lewis. Manning now. He decides to tuck it as the first down inside the Vanderbilt 40-yard line. Glenn Young covers him up. Seven-yard gain for Manning. Manning looking downfield, and you see the rush right in front of him. Pocket starts to collapse a little bit. There's nothing open. He went to two different uh, receivers. He was looking downfield. Nothing there. I'm going to tuck it and go. For a big man at six foot five, he runs very well. Two wide receiver set as Tennessee staying with the eye formation against this Vanderbilt press man defense. Manning now rolling. Has Jordan in his face and throws it away. Corey Chavis was over in coverage for Vanderbilt. Fearless Price in the general area, but Peyton just got rid of that one. 0 for 2 and sacked once already in this game. An inauspicious start. 3,287 yards. He's over 16,000 for his career. Needs 331 to go over 11,000. Only be the fourth player in the history of the NCAA to do that. You cannot deny that he has put together some amazing stats. And the one thing that's amazing about him, he stayed fairly healthy throughout his career. And we remember last year and the year before, he took a serious pound. Second down and 10. Manning. Again, a mix-up between he and Peerless Price as Carlton Hall and Batten were coming and finally decked Peyton Manning. But uh, Price broke off his pattern that time. You're going to see from the left side of your screen, Wooden Woodhoffer, the head coach, likes to bring one extra man, and the extra man is batting there, and also Hall. Those, those hits are going to start adding up if they keep coming to the midsection of Peyton Manning. Manning knows where those blitz are coming from. He's got to get rid of it with a hot read. Well, when we chatted with Peyton yesterday, he told us that Chavis, where he lines up, that would really tell him a lot about checkoffs. And now Chavis is man-to-man -man with Marcus Nash at the top of the screen. Here comes that little cat and mouse game. The blitz over the middle and caught. Struggling Jermaine Copeland to try to reach the first down, but he's shy of it by a couple of yards. Little cat and mouse game. Woody Woodenhofer said that he wanted to get into a chess match with Peyton Manning. You can see Jamie Duncan, great pickup, but there's the outside pressure. Manning has to get rid of that ball very quickly. Tennessee taking a timeout here. Making a decision on whether they're going to go for three or go for the first down. Damian Charlie came up with him. It'll be fourth down and three when we return. Tennessee's decided to take the points if they can get it. Jeff Hall, native of Winchester, Tennessee. Out of the hold of Vincent Scott, son of Bobby Scott, former All-America here. And the kick is off to the right. He hooked it just a bit and no good. Plenty of leg on that kit. Phil Fulmer knows that knows Jeff Hall has that kind of leg. He has a 53 yarder in his career. Just pulled that one a little bit as it came off his foot. Great snap and hold. Perfect timing. Gets plenty of leg into the ball. That ball would have been good from about 60, but you can see he got through the ball a little too much and pulled it. Fans wanted him to go for it on fourth down. He knows that three points against Vanderbilt, very important. It could be a low-scoring game. This pass incomplete. Allen looking for Tavares Hogan's number seven, sophomore from Defuniac Springs, Florida. 
one of the many young players on this Vanderbilt offense. This is a team that under Rod Dauhauer tried to throw the ball a great deal, go with full wide outs and no tight ends. When Woodenhofer took over as head coach, he decided to go back to an option and bootleg series. They've become a more uh, eye formation, split back kind of team, and they've really kind of started to rely on their tailback. Jared McGrath, the youngster we touched on, has outstanding speed outside, makes the corner, and should have a first down at the 44 yard line. McGrath, freshman from Ocala, Florida, picks up 12. A toss sweep, they got contain, they brought contain, and Jared McGrath, more of a bruising type runner. Then Jimmy Williams, both of them true freshmen. McGrath, kind of the fiery guy, gets in guys' faces. Watch the block by number 41, Paul Morgan. That's what sprung it. You have to keep contained with your outside linebacker, and, and Tennessee was not able to do that on that particular play. Boy, Goodrich has been active already. A couple of tackles and a fumble recovery for him. First and 10 at the 44 of Vanderbilt. Morgan, pass incomplete. Corey Noel in coverage for Tennessee. Noel a senior from Melrose High School in Memphis. Expect to see that more today where Allen moves out of the pocket. They don't like to drop him straight back. He's better when he runs around. Torrey Noel actually last week had to play some linebacker when Al Wilson was down against Kentucky. Did a nice job and I'm sure he's glad to be back in that defensive backfield. Play a little more in space. They have to do some of it before the day is done. They'd really like to have Leonard Little at that defensive end spot rather than middle linebacker. is one for four. Here comes the reverse. Hogan's has some blocking in front of him and is only a yard shy of a first down at the 47-yard line of Tennessee. With the missed field goal and now a little movement on the offensive side of the ball, Vanderbilt starting to get a little momentum. See a little fake handoff, Allen, and you have to be cognizant as a Tennessee defender that he may be rolling out to throw the ball. Hogan is their sprinter. He's their big play guy. Michael Salsman came up with a nice block to spring him real close to that first down mark. Third down, a yard to go. Up the gut, McGrath has a first down. Inside the 45 to the 44-yard line of Tennessee. They were shooting gaps that time. Little could not come up with him. Little time that snap perfectly, but he made a big mistake. You're going to see Leonard Little's just going to come right up the A gap right here, and he's going to try to get in. He gets right in the backfield. Saucman can't get to him, but Leonard Little made a huge mistake. You have to break down. Don't worry about making a four-yard loss play. Just get him at the line of scrimmage, and it becomes fourth down. First and ten for the Commodore. Looking deep for Yoder again. Same pattern and incomplete. Terry Fair, step for step with Yoder, who's had some of the bigger catches this season against LSU in a monumental drive for Vanderbilt when they fell short seven to six, could not get off a two-point play at the end of the game. Terry Fair and Yoder in a little pushing match. The officials won't call it as long as both guys are kind of putting their hands on each other. Fair is the one actually running that route at this point. He got in front of Yoder. He knew it was a fly pattern the whole way. Nice coverage by the senior from Phoenix, Arizona. He married uh, back in July, did uh, Terry Fair. McGrath trying to bounce outside. Good cut to get away from Terry Fair, but then nailed at the 41-yard line. Picked up about three yards. McGrath's got nifty little feet. He's kind of known as the bruiser. Surprised we have not seen Jimmy Williams, the other freshman tailback, a little bit faster than McGrath. Al Wilson is shaken up. He's down on the field. That is not good news. This is perhaps the most unsung defensive player on the field today. We'll check on his status. I'm sure Mike Harris will find out when we return. Scoreless in Knoxville. They're attending to Al Wilson, who apparently aggravated a left ankle injury that he had a couple of weeks ago against Arkansas. Very sore against Kentucky. He doesn't really take much of a shot. Makes a good play to get off the block. But watch right here when he plants. See his ankle? See how it just kind of tweaks just a little bit? When you have a sore ankle, that's a big deal, and he may be on the sidelines for a while. Third down and seven. Allen over the middle and caught, but shy of the first down. Duke comes away with it, but did not run a pattern 
deeply enough. Raynock Thompson, along with Sean Johnson, number 35, get on the pile. Be interesting to see what Woodenhofer will do here. Have about a 54-yarder if they decided to kick it. Now, you can't let this kind of field position get away from you, can you? I mean, at some point, you've got to become productive on the scoreboard. Well, the one thing that Philip Fulmer knows is that Woodenhofer is very, very confident in his defense, and he'll go for it because, you know what? He's willing to defend that field. One team has a lot at stake. One team wants their first conference win since 95. against Tennessee. And you even need to go back further for Vanderbilt to beat Tennessee in Neyland Stadium. 1975 was the year. Fourth and two. McGrath is the eye back, and there's the option series to him. First down, it appears. Drag down, Corey Gaines, number 30, the senior from Catholic High in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but apparently not in time, and it's a first down for the Commodores. My film study did not show me that Jared McGrath was that fast. Corey Gaines had an angle on him, and McGrath outran it. You can see the option, something that's concerned the Tennessee coaches all week because it makes your defensive ends play honest. Good block by Yoder downfield, and McGrath just outruns the contain. Again, I didn't think he was that fast coming into this ballgame. Well, Leonard Little told us that's what they practice on all week, taking angles against that option series. Now the play fake, and again the deep ball being thrown for Hogan. There appeared to be some contact in double coverage. Noel is back there, along with Gaines. Incomplete. The one thing Damian Allen's going to have to start being careful about is watching his receiver all the way down the field. You can see Fair at that point got to turn and watch for the whole time, but they're pushing on each other the whole way. There was contact. Possibly that ball uh, was considered to be uncatchable, though, as Allen kind of floated that. Two out of seven for seven yards. It's second down and ten. McGrath with a little misdirection. Down to the 31-yard line. Let's go down to Mike Harris. Mike? Well, the word on Al Wilson is that he re-injured the same ankle he hurt earlier this season, and they're going to hold him out this series and then go from there. Well, it will be interesting to see the defensive measures taken by John Chavis, the defensive coordinator and longtime assistant. The way he was walking on that ankle, Tim, I don't know that we're going to see a lot of Al Wilson for the rest of this game. Remember, he got hurt in the first quarter against Arkansas, and the defense has struggled in the two ball games he's been out. This could be his third. 12th play of the drive, third down and eight. Out of the shotgun. Little coming from the defensive end spot. They moved him. Leonard Little had gone to the end of spot rather than middle linebacker. And Damian Allen did not pick it up. Leonard Little with that incredible speed coming from the outside. That's his 26th sack as a Tennessee volunteer. That puts him at second behind Reggie White with 32. Has played linebacker, defensive end, loves to line up a defensive end, but he said, you know what, I'll play wherever I have to if we're allowed to play for an SEC championship game. Joe Webb will run it away, and again, Vanderbilt denied. With good field position. That can catch up to you. Bear is back deep. Bear catch called for, and again, the pooch punt will be down inside the 15-yard line. You have to be aware of where number one is on each play. Here he is on right tackle, Ramante Bindham. Bynum gets out of his stance late, tries to tackle Leonard Little. I'm surprised the flag wasn't thrown, but he comes up with the sack. The reason Allen could not get out of there in scramble, though, good pressure up the middle by Tennessee, kept him in the pocket. Doesn't it make a difference having Little at defensive end uh, rather than reading and reacting at middle linebacker? Well, and you put him opposite Jonathan Brown, who leads the SEC with 11 and a half sacks. Those are two great rushers on the outside. First and ten, out of the eye, fearless price in motion, and uh, Jamal Lewis. They're going to get a steady diet of him today. First down, Tennessee near the 30. Raheem Batten, Corey Chavis, over there to make the stop. 15-yard pickup for the freshman from the state of Georgia. Right side of that offensive line doing a nice job collapsing it down. Little counter tray. Lewis breaks it to the outside, and nobody's home. Watch Marcus Nash. He's trying to block downfield. Thankfully, Jamal Lewis at 220 pounds with those high knees can run through some of those tackles. Quick hitch out to punt Peerless Price. 
He's had a tough time. He's coming off a knee injury. In fact, Manning told us uh, yesterday that only now is he regaining the, the form he once had. There have been critics this season of the Tennessee receivers. Most people felt that uh, this was a great triumvirate with Peerless Price, Jermaine Copeland, and Andy McCullough, but uh, there have been breakdowns in that aspect of their offensive game. Talking to their offensive coordinator, David Cutlips, he said they've had a lot of mental breaks, especially when teams start going to zone defense. And another example of it. Price runs a quick out, and obviously Manning felt the fade pattern had been called off of that hot read. Philip Fulmer, when we visited him yesterday, he said that sometimes ten, uh, Tennessee's guys run the wrong routes. You can see both their receivers here. Manning obviously assuming one of them is going to run a deep comeback or a fade. And both of them end up running short routes, the stop and the out. Definitely some communication problems going on right now. Third down and ten. When the backs come up this closely, it generally means pass, and that's what it is. Under, down the sidelines and incomplete. Well, the officials are allowing contact. Corey Chavis had some there with Nash, and there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Marker back at the line of scrimmage. But again, uh, a lot of press man defense in the secondary that we've seen and a lot of jockeying for position today. And Corey Chavis and his mates in the defensive backfield for Vanderbilt have figured out that, hey, if they're going to let us bump and grab, we're going to do it all day. Of course, that makes your job a whole lot easier when you're out there one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Nash. After the play, dead ball foul, personal foul on the offense. It'll be a fourth down, the penalty's half the distance to the goal line. An important penalty, Tim. As we're seeing a battle for field position, you're going to back them up another 15, and now Tennessee's going to be punting from its own goal line instead of pinning Vanderbilt deep in their own territory. Chavis very satisfied with himself and the effort. Yes, he is the nephew of Barney Chavis, longtime NFL player, now coaching with the Broncos. Hogue will punt it away. Once more, Vanderbilt should be in Tennessee territory as Duke takes it in at his 45 and slips at midfield trying to make a cut. Big day in college football. Full ramifications center around this game, Syracuse and Miami. They have been the nemesis for Donovan McNabb, the outstanding quarterback who's led Syracuse back from the depths of despair back in September. All of that coming up immediately following our game. Doubleheader Saturday on this Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Happy to have you with us here on CBS Sports. Syracuse trying to break the jinx of Miami. I've never beat them in Big East competition. There's the quick lateral. This is an opportunity for a throwback, and he's got it. Damian Allen down the sidelines with markers down at the 35-yard line. Pass thrown by Jimmy Williams, the freshman running back out of Episcopal High School in Baton Rouge. He, along with McGrath, have uh, been the difference in this Vanderbilt offense this year. And get the preliminary indication here. Here's to be against Vanderbilt. Ed Lambert, the offensive coordinator, lied to us. Then he told us we didn't put any trick plays <laughs> in during these two weeks. Well, Ed, I would have to classify that under the trick department. Well, now it appears it's going to be against There's Tennessee. No foul. It was ruled that the pass was caught in the uh, behind the neutral zone. Therefore, the penalty for illegal receivers downfield. Is nullified. That's the first right, down. So, well, they got together and talked about it and decided uh, it was no call. You can see that they're just going to set up the receiver. He's kind of set behind the other guys. He's just going to back up and throw it to him. And then Allen's going to roll back the other way. And they, they all passes were thrown by the line of scrimmage. Williams this time off the pitch. Stopped at the 38-yard line. Walker in there. Darwin Walker, 58. Young man uh, from South Carolina, only a sophomore. This team is three deep uh, at every position defensively. Walker's been a nice surprise late in this year. Kind of didn't play much early on. He's come on, had a great game against Kentucky. Strongest bench press on the team of 530 pounds, so you know he can shed a few blocks down in there. Zach Winkler is the wide receiver at the top of your screen. And it's the draw. Williams down to the 31-yard line. Should be about seven yards shy of a first down after a seven-yard pickup. 
it appears that Vanderbilt's trying to take advantage of the fact that Al Wilson is on the sideline. Running a little draw and screens. There's Leonard Little lined up again at the defensive end spot. Jimmy Williams, a freshman, leads this team in rushing, and you can see why. He's got great burst through the hole. Raynott Thompson came up with him. We come down to the closing seconds of the opening quarter. Scoreless from Knoxville. Out of the shotgun on third and seven. Quarterback draw. Nothing doing. Tennessee did not bite on that one again. Walker there to make the stop. That should be the final play of the period. Again, decision time for Woodenhofer and his staff, though. Be a long field goal from here. But they will have some time to think about it since we're at the end of the quarter. Scoreless, Tennessee and Vanderbilt will return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local CBS station. Nothing, nothing, our score as we open the second quarter along with Ed Cunningham and Mike Harris, Tim Brando, and Vanderbilt will get their first opportunity at three. Freshman John Markham from Brentwood, Tennessee will try a 47-yarder, his longest this season, 49. Out of the hold of Billy Miller. And the Commodores strike first. They have had field position throughout this game, and they finally cash in. And lead this game by a score of three to nothing in front of a very quiet 107,000 people. We'll be back with more after this word from your CBS station. Three to nothing, Vanderbilt leading after Markham's 47-yard kick. Tennessee has failed to stretch in this game. Cedric Wilson is back deep for 14 for the Volunteers. Freshman who has uh, had a tremendous impact offensively this year. Now on special teams, he'll get a try, and he's out to the 20-yard line. And thought there may have been a face mask that went uncalled. You hear a few coos, a smattering of them at the 21-yard line. You look at the scoring drive for Vanderbilt. Only 20 yards, but five plays, and Markham's 47-yard field goal getting them three. And uh, at uh, a certain stage, you begin to wonder when will Tennessee come out of the offensive doldrums? No question that the officials missed a call here, and that is a 15-yard face mask. When you take a guy to the ground while holding onto his face mask, it's a 15-yarder. Brooks Collins had him by the face mask. First and 10 for Manning, who's one out of seven so far. Out to Lewis, and Jamal Lewis has stopped at the 19-yard line. Lost a couple of yards. That, that scoring drive by Vanderbilt, although it only ate up two minutes on the clock, it took a long time. There were some TV timeouts, some timeouts taken by Vanderbilt. Their defense is very well rested. When they're playing that attack style, you can see their pursuit continuing. They are all running to the football. We haven't heard from Bryson that often. He's in the slot right, number 24. Manning this time with a pump fake over the middle to Copeland. Jermaine Copeland, who's been a favorite target, the junior from Harriman, Tennessee. Out to the 33-yard line, a 14-yard pickup, and they go to a hurry-up offense to try to confuse the Commodore. Kentucky showed that to them last week. I guess they picked up on it and said, let's give it a try. Andy McCullough, number 88, is coming to the game at one wide receiver, playing to the bottom of the screen. comes Duncan. Manning reads it. But the pass a bit hurried over the head of Copeland. I think at this stage you have to begin to think that the emotions of the moment, what we talked about at the outset, how that would impact Peyton Manning, I think we've seen an example of it and it's showing up statistically. Anybody who's ever seen Brett Favre playing a big game, you've seen a guy who gets excitable and floats some balls. That's what you saw by Peyton Manning there. Needs to calm himself down. They're blitzing, but his offensive line is doing a nice job of stopping the initial charge of the Vandy defenders. This crowd of better than 107,000 has been awfully quiet and the flag thrown. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offensive line. Second down, five yard penalty. Today's aerials are being provided by the Bud One Airship, which reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. Looking down upon the largest house in college football. 
from the 28 yard line. Second and 15. Three step drop against pressure and incomplete intended for Price. Outstanding coverage by Vincent. And plenty of pressure coming from Ainsley Battles, number 22, the strong safety. See the coverage by Vincent, who was Corey Chavis' cousin. And Chavis was quick to point out to us, this guy's going to be better than I am. And you can see why. He's with Price, step for step. And the hits are starting to add up on, May on Pan. And you've got to like his guts to stand in there. But when you're getting taken down hard like that to the turf, you'll start to think about it when guys are blitzing free. Well, the strong safety and, of course, Duncan coming from all over the field. You never know where he's going to line up. Here he comes again. A lot of pressure and Manning is sacked. Carlton Hall and Anthony Jordan both shooting through the gaps. And right now, the chess match is advantage Woody. He has taken over. Woody's defense has taken over this game. You can see on the outside, Carlton Hall and his running mate, Anthony Jordan, go unblocked. The running back has to make a choice. Take one or the other, but whatever you do, don't let both of those guys go free. Now, people that had this team as a 30-point underdog know very little about Vanderbilt's defensive prowess since Woody Woodenhofer's taken over, both as coordinator and now as head coach. Alvin Duke, all the way back to his 30, a beautiful punt by Hogue, and he stopped at the 37-yard line. That's where Vanderbilt will take over first and 10. Edmonds, Derek Edmonds down there to make the stop for Tennessee. Here in Knoxville, it's been Vanderbilt's defense that's been the story. Tim Brando along with Ed Cunningham, Mike Harris, happy to have you with us. Vanderbilt leading three to nothing. There may be more surprises before this day is done in college football. Play fake, Damian Allen running out of time. That is a forward pass. A late flag comes down at the 35-yard line, but his arm had been grabbed. That pass altered by all of the pressure coming up front from Coleman, 92, among others. Thrown in an area where we should have offensive holding. Illegal touching. The ball was touched by an ineligible lineman on the offense. Penalty's five yards and lost it down. Second down. That's unfortunate because he was throwing a deep pattern, but the defender's arm altered this pass. Damian Allen has to step up in the pocket. The middle of the pocket's pretty secure, but you're going to see the pressure come from both sides of the line. Step up in there before you get hit. Reason they called illegal touching, that ball hit Romante Bindum first, and Jeff Coleman getting around and got a hold of his arm as he was throwing. That's the reason it occurred. And uh, there could have been holding called. <laughs> Vanderbilt's offensive line. Really being hammered here. Williams has passed behind the line of scrimmage, and he is dumped back at the 27-yard line. Raynock Thompson there to get him a loss of six on the play. And the volunteer is down on the field. We have an injured volunteer. Our coach's playbook, and it's been all Vandy's defense today. The offensive line for Tennessee is sliding down inside. That means the back has two linebackers, one to two. He has to take the most dangerous of those two, which is the inside guy, Carlton Hall. Bryson picks up neither of them, and you see the result is a big loss for Tennessee. And uh, you see Bryson on the sidelines, and we have an injured volunteer. That's Sean Ellis, the sophomore from Anderson, South Carolina, who backs up Jonathan Brown at defensive end. Ellis has come on strong in the last part of the season. He, he was one of the reasons that they could move Leonard Little to linebacker because he was such a presence in, in spring and fall camp at that defensive end spot. The one area where Tennessee has lacked depth has been at linebacker, and really Little gave of himself for Philip Fulmer. Fulmer telling Leonard, hey, we've got an outstanding defensive end that can get a lot more reps than Sean Ellis. Little is one of those guys, such a team guy, he said, I don't care what position I have to play. If we're 9-1 and one with a chance to be SEC East Division champion, I'll play anywhere on this football field. Third down and 21. Out of the shotgun. Play fake off of it, and again the spread out. Pass incomplete. Thrown at the feet of Tavares Hogan's. 
Corey Gaines also there, number 30 in the orange and white. And the faithful of Tennessee very happy with their defense as they rise to attention. about to this point. The defense just gave them something to cheer about, though. That's the type of thing that Tennessee needed. Get a good stop, some negative yardage plays, see if you can get some field position back. Joe Webb to punt it away. This should be a fair catch as it hits the deck by fair. And we'll roll dead at the 41-yard line. Volunteers will have excellent field position. They have been outgained Offensively, 50 yards of offense for Vanderbilt, 39 for the Heisman frontrunner led Tennessee offense. Last week we had questions on uh, what was the all time greatest rivalry? The answer is very revealing Ohio State, Michigan, obviously. Uh, winning 33% to the Florida State Florida Sunshine matchup. This week, click on to CBSSportsLine.com and submit your vote from our list of college football's all time greatest bowl games. Select one of these nominees, then tune to our game next weekend and find out who's the fan's choice in the Packard Bell CBS Sports Line All-Time Greats Bowl. First and 10 for the Volunteers from their 41-yard line, 11.52 remaining in the half. And here's Lewis off the tall sweep. Jamal Lewis, very close to a first down, run down by number 98, Ryan Alls, the freshman from Lebanon, Tennessee. Who is such a nice runner between the tackles, but here you're going to see the toss sweep. Bryce in the fullback who made the mistake earlier. It's a nice cut block downfield on uh, Ainsley Battles, and that frees Lewis to cut up inside for an extra three or four yards in the first down. From the 47-yard line, Lewis now with 42 yards on seven carries. And he gets it again on the counter. To the 42, Jamie Duncan meets him there. Well, it's obvious that the skies from Vanderbilt secondary have served to confuse Peyton Manning for a third consecutive year, hence Lewis's presence. It's good to see that the Tennessee coaching staff is sticking with their game plan, though. They said, we're going to use Lewis to set up Manning. Against that pressure, if you pop a run with nobody back, it's like popping a fade route if you go for a touchdown. If there were any doubt that the Heisman is not uh, the top priority, Based on his checkoffs to run plays, we now know it. As Lewis hurls to the 41-yard line, because a, at a stage such as this, there are those in this country that are checking his numbers as much as the score of this game. The coaches and Peyton Manning talked all week, especially offensive quarter, coordinator David Cutcliffe. He said, we sat down, we knew we had to have the conversation, and said, Peyton, this game is not about you. It's not about anything that has to do with the Heisman. It is about the University of Tennessee and our chance to play for the first S first time for the SEC championship in the tournament final, which is not the tournament final, but the SEC final against Auburn and Atlanta. They've never been there since the divisional breakdown. Manning off a rollout, looking for Price. Benson may have obstructed his view and maybe more than that. Again, plenty of contact in that secondary through the course of this game. You can see the look of Vincent's face. He's saying, you know what, I may have got away with one there. They're going to roll the pocket a little bit. That's a good way to get away from some of the pressure. Pressure. Looks like their feet just tied up. Vincent didn't really use his hands to defend on that play. And when the feet get tied up, they're not going to call the uh, defensive pass interference. Tennessee's now 0 of 6 on third down. Oak to punt it away. Duke back deep, standing in his 10. They'll let this one bounce, and it does make the checkerboard end zone. Don't you love that? You gotta love the checkerboard nice end zone. Part of the color and pageantry of football here in Tennessee. You, you think back years ago, you turn on your TV on an autumn Saturday, and you see that, you knew it was seventh heaven. As an ex-player, it's good to see that painted over grass now, too. <laughs> I gotta admit, I didn't like it as much over AstroTurf. It's much prettier when it has grass underneath it. Vanderbilt from their 20. McGrath. Trying to miss direction, but again, wrapped up quickly. Raynock Thompson 
the first to make contact. This is a young man that wanted to play with a bruised kidney against UCLA and has played with a bloody nose from time to time. Because Vanderbilt has such a tough, tough time throwing the football, it allows you to bring those safeties up and play some linebacker. And that's what Raynock does, puts a nice knock on Jared McGrath. The defense for Tennessee is starting to step it up some. They're saying, we'll take this game on our shoulders offense. You get yourself moving, and we'll make some big plays for you. Second and 10. Out of the eye, Morgan is the up back. Option series to McGrath. Leonard Little meets him dead on at the 24-yard line. That's, again, one of the interesting aspects of this game, Tennessee having to defend against the option. Damian Allen has been an option quarterback most of his life, was asked to be a dropback quarterback last year. Watch how he holds the ball till the last possible minute. What that allows the running back to do is run downhill. The minute he catches the ball, he's headed for the line of scrimmage. That ended up being a five-yard game that looked like it could have been stopped for a loss. Ed uh, Allen has had three separate offensive coordinators in his four years at Vanderbilt. Third down and five. Over the middle and drop. Elliott Carson was wide open, and that has been the M.O. all season long for Vanderbilt. Turnovers and drop passes. Just a second ago, I was talking about the safeties for Tennessee, able to walk up into the line of scrimmage. What that does is it leaves the Y receiver, the tight end, right down the middle wide open. Elliott Carson has got to make this play. He runs for a long time if he's able to hold on to that one. Freshman from Lebanon, Tennessee. And now Terry Fair drops back deep, awaiting the punt from Webb. A good one into a win. And a flag will come down as Vincent got in the two-yard zone. And that obviously is illegal. So Tennessee will have even better field position after a 41-yard punt by Webb. Not sure if I like that rule, Tim. As long as they don't interfere with the guy, get in his way while he's trying to catch it, I think it should be more of a judgment call than say you have to be three or four or how many yards they want to say you have to be away from. It. Easy call to make, however. Interference with the kick receiver. It's a violation of the two-yard bell. Five-yard penalty, first down. You can see his fares calling for the ca fair catch. Get away from him. Don't even run by him. You can see... You can see Vincent, cornerback, running right by him. Even though he was by him, he still was inside that two yards. But again, not sure I like that rule. Now, as I say, good execution of a poor rule in your estimation. <laughs> Out of an eye formation, Tennessee at their 39. Manning's pass. Caught at the 48-yard line. Peerless Price in front of Vincent. I felt for a moment Vincent was going to make a play on that and try for the pick. There's the arm straight of Peyton Manning. You can see Price in motion. He's just going to run about a 12-yard out route, and the ball is already on its way. That's why Vincent can't quite get there. A little bit of a late throw, but Vincent shows why his cousin, Corey Chavis, the other quarterback, so excited about his prospects as a covering uh, defensive back. That's Manning's fourth completion of the day. From the 47, Vanderbilt shows blitz again, and Lewis runs into it. Gets it down to the 42-yard line. Carlton Hall wraps him up. Don't forget, coming up next, more NASDAQ college football on CBS Sports. 16th-ranked Syracuse against Miami. Ryan Clement. Well, I mean, you think about uh, our game with West Virginia earlier this year and where Miami was at that point. If they win today, they become bowl eligible. And, of course, with a name like Miami, they're very... Uh very good to a bowl when they come because they help with TV ratings and everything. They've come a long way. Lewis inside the 40 to the 39. Batten in there to make the stop. Number eight, the free safety. Let's go down to Mike Harris. Well, the Tennessee offense, not really worried at all. They were very calm, and they just said, if we just keep operating and working our game plan, we'll score. And it looks like they're moving ball right now. The veteran group like they have on offense. A lot of seniors playing. That's what I would expect. These guys have been through a lot together. No need to get nervous. They know what they can do. Third down and three. Looking for their first third down conversion of the day. Give it to Lewis and get one. Jamie Duncan wraps him up. 
inside the 35 at the 33 yard line. This is beginning to look like a Jamal Lewis kind of afternoon. You can start to see some of the Vanderbilt defenders start to back off a little bit as they're getting hit. You'll see the left side of the line does a nice job. No blitz that time. There's Bryson. Boy, he's doing a nice job downfield on their linebackers, getting down around their legs. And Lewis has already rushed for 60 yards, and, and we're only midway through the second quarter. Copeland and Bryce are the wide receivers. Copeland to the top of the screen. Reverse to Price. Vanderbilt would have none of it. And down he goes. Very tough to trick this Vanderbilt defense. Stallworth, very steady, did not bite the defensive end. Never gave up his position. If there's one defensive end that you don't want to challenge with a reverse and see if he's going to play his responsibility, it's Jay Stallworth. Making his 40 fourth consecutive start today in college. He started every game he's played in. Think he's seen a few of those in his day, Tim? Young man with a 2.7 GPA in human resources out of Marshall, Texas on the Texas-Louisiana border and a proud papa, we're told. Second down and 15. Manning, quick hits to Price. There's the block he needed to get rid of Chavis, but again, those outstanding linebackers with sideline to sideline speed Anthony Jordan hammers Peerless Price. When was the last time you saw a defense with three guys playing linebacker that are this good? Anthony Jordan's going to fight off a block. You can see Price sets it up. Anthony Jordan's going to fight off a block from Mercedes Hamilton and run right through. What a great tackle. You saw him face up the receiver, run right through him. Anthony Jordan, all the other linebackers say he may be better than them. Third and 11. Manning uh, only 37 yards, 5 out of 14 so far today. Over the middle, Copeland, Copeland, touchdown. They blitzed on that one. They had one on one. And Jermaine Copeland runs away from number 30, Damian Charlie. Just a little short post route. Six points for number six. All for the extra point. So they get their first third down conversion and follow that up with a big time conversion. Philip Fulmer squad, take a deep breath, coach, up by four. Here's convert on a 61-yard drive and lead it 7-3. All the linebackers blitzing in the middle. You got one-on-one, -on -one, Damian Charlie. Jermaine Copeland makes a nice break on the ball. You can see the linebacker step back. Raheem Benton was up in the line. He stepped, and, and Copeland got right around him as he went in for the touchdown. Nice, nice, ru nice route run by Tennessee. Uh, Copeland has been really more of the go-to receiver this year. They lost Joey Kent to graduation. You see the 61-yard drive and Copeland on the receiving end. Nash has had big games, but Copeland has been steady for Peyton Manning. They've got a lot of big people back there, but again, they need to keep stepping up in this game. They've struggled early on. Oh, there's a huge mistake made by the freshman Jimmy Williams. You know, if you're a Vanderbilt fan, at this stage, you say, that's why we're Vanderbilt. You know, in big games, you just cannot make that kind of mistake. As a freshman, he has to know on kickoff returns, when you get near that sideline, take a chance and let it get out of bounds. If that ball goes out of bounds, you get it on the 35. Instead, they're starting on the four with 107,000 people screaming at them. And this is exactly where the volunteers go after the jugular. And, and you begin to think, what about the jersey you wear versus the jersey they wear? And now Tennessee can start thinking, you know what? We got it up. Al Wilson's back in the game. Maybe we blitz him. Try to get a score of our own. First and 10 for the Commodores at their four-yard line. And movement. Down he goes back at the one, but there was premature movement in the Commodores' offensive line. And now a little extracurricular activity. That'll keep our uh, officials busy. Bill Goss will tell us about it, our referee. Dead ball foul, first ball. 
And an example of what the crowd can do to you as an offensive lineman. Michael Salzman, the left guard, and the right guard, and, and Guiano, both of them moving a little early. You really have to focus in on that quarterback's voice with this much noise. First and 12, they'll try to throw out of it. Nice idea, the quick slant is complete to Anthony Asma. Coming up at halftime on College Football Today's Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Craig James, Lou Holtz get you caught up all the latest news, scores, and highlights on what is a very important day in college football. All coming up on the College Football Today Halftime Report. That last pass gave them a little breathing room, but they're still going to have to deal with this crowd. Second down and five. again looking on the post for Yoder contact at the 44 and again no marker as the contact uh, coming as the legs were tied up between he and Terry Fair that post pattern has been there all day they've just at, at, at this stage not been able to hook up I believe Fair and Benson both the other the quarterback from Vanderbilt got away with a little bit there he had his hand on his back but he wasn't grabbing at it more the feet getting caught up and the officials are just making sure that they're not grabbing at the jerseys. Looks like Fair played that one pretty clean. Third down and five. This could be a real turning point for Vanderbilt's confidence should they convert. Simply getting a first down here would be very helpful to their play. And it's a delay, and Tennessee's got it well read. Little Little leading the charge. Duke has stopped for no gain. showing that he can not only rush the passer but be smart enough to keep his eyes up and see the handoff go in and make a nice tackle big play for Tennessee pins Vanderbilt way back they're starting to win the field position more that they lost in the first quarter Webb will put it away low spiral fielded by fair at the 42 well defended Carlton Hall you talk about a do everything player right down there in the tracks of Terry Fair to bring him down. An outstanding young man, both uh, academically and on the playing field, the senior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Speaking of leaders and uh, scholar athletes, today's NASDAQ scholar athlete of the game, Chris Hogue of Tennessee, NASDAQ's commitment to the investment in our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Tennessee's General Scholarship Foundation. 2.99. Where, where do you think he got the B minus to drop him below <laughs> that that three level? That professor knows who he is. <laughs> At the 43, first and 10 for Manning. Lewis inside the 40 to the 39, and with this kind of time remaining, Carlton Hall, the first to make contact. Uh, time for a little old-fashioned Southern power football from the Volunteers. This is the difference, Tim, with this football team. They could not do that in the first three games of this year and all of last year. They, Philip Bulmer did not have a guy that he could turn around, hand it off, and say, get me four every time you touch it, and now they have it. And Jay Graham had a propensity when he was here for dropping the football in key games, in key situations. Not Lewis. He has very quick feet. Keeps them turning here as he runs into Ainsley Battles 22. The sophomore strong safety who's been very active today. That first, nice block by Mercedes first Hamilton. Down. Lewis decided to take that ball outside. May have been better served to follow him up through the middle. You saw that big uh, sigh of relief from Fulmer after that touchdown. It kind of goes back to the point we were making it. After they lost to Florida on that September Saturday, they never thought they'd be here. And uh, you look at the yards in that last drive versus the rest of the half. Maybe they're getting it together. Lewis off the corner. Carlton Hall knocks him out of bounds. And the quick feet, that, if you ask David Cutcliffe his greatest attribute, he'll say his, his feet. He's got great quickness in his feet. It's amazing for a man his size, 220 pounds. But the true star on this is Bryson, the fullback. You're going to see him go out here, and he's going to lock up Anthony Jordan. Watch him drive his feet. A little hold of the jersey, that's okay. That's a pancake, Tim. That's why Jamal Lewis is having a big afternoon. Bryson, we gave him a little heat earlier for missing a blitz. 
Got the job done there. Spoken by a center who had a few pancakes in his day while playing for Don James in Washington. And a few holes. <laughs> Play fake Manning looking. On the crossing pattern, he's got his man. That's McCullough. And now, Peyton is in sync. 19 yards and a first and goal. You can almost sense the confidence that Tennessee is starting to feel because they're running the ball. Now that they, they can go to the play action, you see the linebackers start to fill, and that's why those underneath crossing routes are so open. Vincent is expecting help from his linebackers, but the play fake is keeping them up in the line of scrimmage. Out of an eye formation, Bryce in the lead back, the toss sweep. Cut back, nets him the six-yard line. Jamie Duncan, the first to make contact. Carlton Hall also in the general area stopped at the six yard line and a timeout taken by Tennessee. And uh, you see uh, Hall already to one knee. This is now a Vanderbilt defense that's been on the field quite a while. If Tennessee can con convert this into a touchdown, they'll score as many points as they did last year. They only beat them 14 to 7 in 96. A company most people never heard of is changing the way we fight cancer and kidney failure by inducing the body to produce blood cells. Chemotherapy and anemia patients are gaining new strength, helping to grow blood cells, helped Amgen become the world's largest biotech company. Where do you learn about companies with such pioneering spirit? Exactly. Nasdaq.com. Minute seven remaining, Tim Brando, Ed Cunningham, Mike Harris. Coming up at halftime, uh, Jim, Lou, and uh, the big pony, Craig James. Uh, interesting to hear from them yesterday, mentioning up front they had a Heisman vote. They had already pulled the lever in favor of, of Peyton Manning. I, I think I'm going to wait with mine at least until after today and perhaps even after the SEC championship game played on December 6th. The ballots, by the way, have to be in by December 11th at 5 p.m. You're going to wait till the 10th and FedEx yours. Right? You're going to wait till the last second. I make an investment by FedExing it in. I don't later. disagree with their choice, but I'm going to wait myself. You can't deny the great things that Peyton Manning's done, but there's been a few guys out there in college football this year very impressed. You cannot have another Memphis outing between now and the SEC championship. Lewis cutting back inside the five to about the four-yard line. Looked like maybe a little confusion on that play. It was a pitch play that looked like it was designed to go outside. And somehow Lewis ended up back behind Trey Teague, the center. I don't know how he got there. They call this the orange zone in Tennessee. Other places it would be considered the red zone. For obvious reasons, it's a bright orange. This is a very big play for the Vanderbilt defense. Third down and goal from the four. Out of the shotgun, Manning. He'll tuck it. Steps out, shy of the two-yard line. We'll mark it at the three. Ainsley Battles did the job. And now the decision to go for three coming up. The fans won't like it, but it's understandable. Starts as a drop back. Manning sees a little pressure. Cozy Coleman does a nice job getting Glenn Young inside, and that's what bought Manning the extra time. See how he's pumping the ball there? He wants the defense to think, I still may throw it so he can maybe sneak into the end zone. But the speed of the linebackers from Vanderbilt was a difference on that one. Carlton Hall runs a legit 4-6-40. You think of uh, Archie and all of those years that he uh, quarterbacked uh, with New Orleans. Uh, Bobby Scott from Tennessee was his uh, backup. And Bobby's son, Vincent, is the holder here for this field goal drive. And it's good by Jeff Hall. His first of the day, he's one out of two, and it's 10-3 Tennessee. The Budweiser blimp and its eye-in-the-sky camera are proud to provide you with the live shots a 1,000 feet above Neyland Stadium today, here in the Smoky Mountains where the Tennessee River meets Neyland Drive. Nothing could be finer than that on an autumn afternoon in this state. Let's go to... Woody Woodenhopper's flight, and uh, certainly he has to feel better about his team's chances after that uh, stop inside the 10. Tennessee was starting to gain some momentum. They had two nice drives they put together. It looked like they were going to score again. Tightened up. He relied on those three linebackers. Carlton Hall came up with a big stop on Peyton Manning, and 
Philip Fulmer decided wisely to go for three, but they have to take a, a, a breath of a sigh of relief, relief and, and be glad that they got away with three points because Tennessee has really started to move the ball on. Jimmy Williams is back deep. It was his error that really cost them field position when he tried to field the ball and fumbled it out of bounds at the two-yard line, and uh, not surprisingly, they go right back at him with a squid kick. And uh, they've got, they now have his number inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, and that's where Vanderbilt will take over and obviously let the clock run down. Eric Edmonds was down there, 33 for Tennessee. Scoring drive of 41 yards, eight plays, 237 off the clock, and the youngster from Winchester, Tennessee, Jeff Hall, with a 19-yarder. He missed a 49-yard attempt earlier this afternoon. Even though Tennessee only came up with three points on the drive, it did a nice job of eating some of the clock. And you can see why Woodenhofer has to be happy with only giving up three, because they've given up all that yardage just in this quarter. And Allen takes the knee. Well, that will do it for the first half. Tennessee's offense did get cranked up somewhat in the second quarter. But their lead is only seven in what is a must win for them to have any opportunity of an outright SEC championship or a possibility that looms for a national title if Washington State can help out in the Rose Bowl in their matchup against the Michigan Wolverines. A little bit of irony there. Manny may have to rely on Ryan Lee for his national championship hopes. Let's go down to Mike Harris. Mike? All right, Coach Fulmer, how concerned were you about the slow start on offense in the first half? No, really concerned about it. Obviously, Vanderbilt's a heck of a defensive team, and we weren't getting a lot done. And really, other than a couple plays, uh, hadn't yet. But I think we're getting more into our rhythm, getting into what they do, and hopefully we'll have some better answers here in the second half. Coach, good luck. Sort of Sort of like a root canal playing this defense. That's the end of the half. Vanderbilt with three. Tennessee 10. Jim, Craig, and Lou will be along with the latest news scores and highlights on the college football halftime report after this word from at halftime. Tennessee with a 10 to 3 lead over Vanderbilt, along with Ed Cunningham, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. And things are shaping up just the way Woody Woodenhopper would like, although Manning did get warm towards the end of the first half. Vanderbilt did a nice job changing up their defense in the front. They brought a lot of linebackers up, dropped them out, made Manning kind of change some things around, and he struggled early on. He was 3 for 12, but then hit his last 4 to, at the end of the half. If you look at the stats in our game, you'll be able to see that clearly in this game, the yardage in the second quarter, they were trailing at one point by a large margin in total offensive yards to Vanderbilt. After the first quarter, it was 56 yards for Vanderbilt, 37 for Tennessee. In the second quarter, though, 122 yards of total offense for Tennessee. Hall will kick it away. Here comes McGrath, and he's hammered at the 22-yard line. First down and 10 for Vandy from their 22. Moments ago, Coach Woodenhofer chatted with our Mike Harris down on the sidelines. Coach, what did you tell your team at the half? I told them that they're, they're, they're playing just like I thought they'd play. They're playing their hearts out to take it up another notch, find something down there, and we're going to win this game. All right, thanks, Coach. Chances are Woody Woodenhopper's defense will not only have to turn the ball over to its offense, but maybe even score themselves. Tried to do that all year, and they haven't had much success. That may be the only way for them to pull this out in the second half. Morgan hammered behind the line. Noel coming up and run support early and then got some help. Al Wilson is back out there. He had aggravated that left ankle sprain in the first half, but is back on the field. And that's uh, good news indeed for Tennessee, particularly where Leonard Little's position is concerned. And the biggest reason they miss Al Wilson, not only is he their best linebacker, he's also their signal caller. And they had a lot of mental bust when he was out of the last two ball games. Second down and 14. Little right now at middle linebacker. McGrath ahead to, to the 22 near the original line of scrimmage. It will be third down and better than 10 coming up. One thing we talked with Ed Lambert, the offensive coordinator of Vanderbilt, about was this team really doesn't have, have an identity on offense like they do on defense. And you just saw that there. Most teams second and 12 or 13, you're going to see them go up top. If they just want to feature the tailback right now, that's what they feel like is the strength of their team. Hey, think about it. That drop by Elliott Carson, the crossing pattern to the tight end, was a big miss uh, in the first half for Vanderbilt's offense. Only one out of eight on third downs this afternoon. 
Allen's pass overthrown and nearly picked off. Well, he airmailed them. That one right over Tavares Hogan, who was open. I think Damian would like to have that one over. That's why it's tough for this team to have any identity. I mean, H Hogan's was wide open in the middle of that uh, zone by Tennessee. Just kind of went in there and settled. The ball was just floated out there on out by out. Webb will punt it away, and Fair will drop back deep, so the Volunteers will get it and probably have outstanding field position for their opening series. Fair standing at his 41-yard uh, line. Shanked it. Absolutely missed it. Out of bounds at midfield. May have gotten a break getting it that far. Just 28 yards. And Tennessee will have it in midfield. And an opportunity for Philip Fulmer's offense to take command. Peyton Manning in search of a potential Heisman. 7 of 16, 89 yards and a touchdown. A, a year ago, that's what he wound up with. Only 163 yards in the over in touchdown passes. Already today, he has one. But he's starting to come on strong. Completed his last four passes at the end of the half. He's starting to feel a little rhythm against his split this half. Play fake to Lewis. A pump fake. Crossing pattern. Should have been picked off by Shavis. That was an ill-advised pass. That was not single. That was not double. That was triple coverage, one of them being Corey Javis, who's most likely a future first-round draft choice in the NFL. Manning would like to have that one back. He's very lucky that Javis didn't come down with that football for the interception. You know, we talk about Peyton Manning's love of the history of the game. Corey Javis has it as well. This is a young man that knows so much about uh, Uncle Barney's relationship in, in the National Football League. Keeps tapes of games dating back to the mid-'80s. Second down and 10. Lewis. Ahead for a couple of yards. He's a broadcasting major as well, and uh, one of the reasons he keeps tapes dating back that far is uh, documenting guys like you and yours truly. <laughs> He's not much to document about me, but Corey says he has between 400 and 500 tapes that he studies all the time. When we were talking about his defenses, when we were talking about the old defenses, he brought up all kinds of old people, including his uncle, Barney Chavis, that he went and worked out with him with the Denver Broncos last May. Yeah, he goes and covers those guys uh, in the offseason. When it's uh, illegal to work out at the collegiate level, he can do it on his own against the Broncos receiver. Marcus Nash, his first catch. Down to the 30-yard line, Raheem Batten brings him down. 17-yard gain. They get Nash going. And uh, Vanderbilt secondary will be hard-pressed to cover both Nash and Jermaine Copeland. Not used to seeing Vanderbilt in his own defense. You can see Benson kind of running off. Knows he has Jordan underneath. Nash just finds that hole in the zone. And that's what's Manning so good about. If he gets protection, he sees so much of the field. Nash was not his primary receiver on that play. First down and 10. Well, one potential turnover got away from Vanderbilt and Davis dropped it. Vanderbilt backs off their blitz. Lewis, tackle to the right side, inside the 30. Inside the 25 and down to the 23. Only three yards shy of a first down. Carlton Hall wraps him up. You know, Tim, in the last few years, this offensive line for Tennessee has taken a lot of pounding. And they feel like they can hang their hat on Jamal Lewis. They have a new physical mentality about them. And a lot of it is attributed to this young man right here. They have a little success in uh, run blocking. It pumps you up for those uh, second and third and long situations. It's nice to know when you miss a guy, too, he may be able to run right through. Second and three. Bumble. Bryson put it on the ground. Vanderbilt says they have it. This may be the break that they need, Tim. We touched on turnover. And the Commodore Tavon. Bryce in the fullback's going to get the handoff. He just didn't handle it very cleanly. Quick little fullback dive. Bryson never even got it. Manny put it in his chest. It's exactly where the ball's supposed to be. Bryson couldn't cleanly grab it. Ball goes into the line of scrimmage. And Vanderbilt, they're back in business very quickly. From the 24-yard line, each team now with a turnover. Option play, and Allen 
up to the 30-yard line. Not a bad idea, but again, uh, the turnover problem for Vanderbilt, many will tell you, is by inserting the option package into their offensive scheme. As good as their defense has been all year, that is only the third fumble recovery they've had. Granted, their offense has turned it over quite a bit, but their defense has not recovered a lot of fumbles. This one could be huge. And if I'm Woody Woodenhofer, I'm getting on the phones and I'm saying I'm offense coordinator, you know what, Ed Lambert, they have not stopped the option yet. Let's go back to it and keep running. Second down and four. with time. Picked off. Dwayne Goodrich has it. Down at the 42-yard line. And the problems for the Vanderbilt defense come to the forefront yet again. Goodrich is sophomore from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Lamonte Bindham stopped him, and that is frustration for Woody Woodenhofer and staff. Dwayne Goodridge in as a nickel back on this play, just drops off into his zone coverage. The mistake Damian Allen makes. Watch how he looks towards that side of the field, pumps and throws to the same receiver that he pumped to. Goodridge makes a nice cut underneath the ball for his third interception of the year. Also returned one for a touchdown earlier in the season. First and ten volunteers. Boy, Lewis put it on the ground, picked it right back up again. Vanderbilt relaxed, and then he gets the first down. That's a tremendous play. Batten wraps him up. Now Vanderbilt seemed to relax after he had dropped the football. Good toss by Manning. Sometimes what happens is the running back, he's starting to look at his blocking scheme, and he takes his eye off the ball, which he did there, somehow picks it back up while in stride. He gets the lucky bounce and ends up with a... 10-yard gain and another Tennessee first down. They're really starting to get Jamal Lewis on the corners of this Vanderbilt defense. Over 100 yards now for Lewis. 102 on 20 carries. And he gets it again. Another first down as they have found a seam in that down four defensive alignment for Vanderbilt. 12-yard pickup. Jamal Lewis, a very special runner between the tackles, but you have to give a lot of credit to his offensive line. Nice job by Bryson. Blew up Carlton Hall, kept the hole open for a long time. Trey Teague, the center, does a nice job. Mercedes Hamilton clears his guy out of the way, number 75. And Lewis has that burst. As soon as he sees a hole, he's able to get inside of it. First time this game that I have seen Woody Woodenhofer put on the phones. Starting to get a little nervous how well they're running the football on his team. First and 10, fade pattern for now. Complete Chavis in pursuit. Glenn Young knocked Manning to the deck. Senior from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, Glenn Young firmly implanted in the face of Peyton Manning. Glenn Young second in the SEC in sacks. Long way to go to the ground. You gotta be careful when those elbows start laying on the ground. Sometimes that shoulder will get a little knocked out of socket. Glenn Young. Second in the SEC with five and a half sacks. Kind of the leader of that defensive line, local guy. Second down and ten. Three step drop to Price. Benson wraps him up. Well, that is really the difference in these corners. Not only are they capable of playing man coverage, but you can't shake and bake these guys. Both these guys with good size. Benson goes 5'11, Ford Chavis goes six foot, six foot one. NFL teams pop these tapes in, and they love seeing these guys play. They're big, physical, they're cousins, so they spend a lot of time together working out, studying film. Vincent was in kind of a, a, a zone coverage. He was off about six yards. He usually liked to be up in the face, and that's why that quick little pop pass works so well. You never see their heads get down, even after their offense puts them in this kind of position. That's the other impressive aspect. Third down and two. Lewis, off tackle, down to the two. There is your difference. Never before has Vandy had to deal with a back like this and Manning. Well, we know for a fact that Peyton Manning will be gone next year. Can't come back for his PhD. He has to move on. This guy is going to make his uh, leaving much easier to take for this Tennessee coaching staff. This is a guy that for the next few years are going to be able to hang their hat on. You, you see him between the tackles. He's so explosive. Our eyes set up this time. Bryson, nothing doing for him, the first back through, Hall, 
Wrapping him up, Lamont Turner, 44, also in on the pile. Your Vanderbilt's defense, Carlton Hall, knows this. If you can get a stop here, you're only down 13 to 3. As, as grim as it has looked since the beginning of the second quarter, get a big stop here and see what can happen. Tennessee has to start thinking, though. we got to get some play action fast. Try to get those linebackers, Hall and his teammates, up into the line and maybe dump off to a tight end. Lewis will dump the off. Uh, over the top. Not quite. Vanderbilt's defense there to answer the challenge. Jamie Duncan, Jason Hill, 72, and Alfonso Harvey. Think it's tough being a running back? Against this group of linebackers, I would say so. You see Hall. You see, four, you see all of those guys wanting to get a pop on him. Maybe jumped a little early. Got to start questioning, Tim, why they are not. We got a little face mask they missed. Why Tennessee has not thrown the ball on the goal line. This is the second time that they've done this. Inside the one, Lewis. No, play fake. Peyton Manning, touchdown. Jamal Lewis between the tackles. They can get the play fake. And you see Peyton Manning put a little move on Lamont Turner. Turner's got to get upfield and make sure that he has contain on Peyton Manning. He did not do that. Ball for the extra point. Tennessee capitalizes on an interception. Manning's done something today he's not done in three years against Vanderbilt. He's thrown a touchdown. Now the Heisman front runner plays gotcha with a play fake to the freshman and goes in for six on a day the family of Manning may never forget. One of many conversations between Peyton Manning and David Cutcliffe, his offensive coordinator, after a eight-play, 41-yard scoring drive, punctuated by Manning's one-yard touchdown run on the bootleg. Sky kick that will be fair caught at the 28-yard line by Vanderbilt. Fred Baker coming away with it. And let's take a look again from a higher view of this play play. The defensive coach of Vanderbilt talk about all their discipline. Lamont Turner makes a big mistake. He follows the play down inside. Instead of staying as deep as the ball, you'll see Manning fake it. It's a naked boot. No, nobody in the checkerboard for Tennessee. It's a run all the way. And Lamont Turner does not have the speed to make up the difference. Jimmy Williams into the game at tailback, gets it up to the 31-yard line, and Leonard Little wraps him up. Jimmy Williams, youngster from Episcopal High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was heavily recruited by a number of schools, including this one, Tennessee, and, and Florida wanted to be a running back, though, and was uh, up front about it. All of the other schools recruiting him in the SEC wanted him to be a defensive back. He chose Vanderbilt, and he was one of the prize catches for what he wouldn't offer instead. There's the pitch to it. Run out of bounds at the 34. And a lot of swagger now being shown by this Tennessee defense. Torrey Noel was up along with Little to run him out. When we met with John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee yesterday. He said the biggest problem in the last two weeks has been missed tackles. We have not seen a lot of that today, Tim. These guys really starting to come up and hit. I think it has to do with that confidence they got late in the first quarter. They started making some nice plays, some stops, and it's rolled right into the second half. Vanderbilt has to keep their defense off the field, at least give them a few minutes rest. They have not had a first down since the first quarter. We have 6.23 left in the third. Williams barely lost that one, and it keeps him from netting a first. Wow, look at that extra effort. That may have netted him a first down as he kept the legs churning near the 38-yard line. He carried about three volunteers with him, and he nearly turned it over. Clay Condry, the tackle on the left side, really kept that play alive with some outstanding blocking. Great officials are calling that a first down. Tremendous extra effort by Williams. 
They've had problems with turnovers all year. They just, sometimes they just don't hold on to the ball. You can see somehow that ball stuck with him. Nice job by Jimmy Williams. See the body lean he had? He was leaning back in his defender and fought for the down the yard. And rolled right into trouble to Allen. Now tucks it and look at him go. That's the best play from scrimmage for Damian Allen. And again, he was rolling right into a blitz pattern, managed to get away from it, and a 20-yard pick up into Tennessee territory. That's why Damian Allen is scary for a defensive coordinator. You have to stay in your rush lane. You watch Tennessee, they kind of get pushed to the outside, and Allen sees that, goes downfield. Watch the block by Elliott Carson right there at the very end on the right side of your screen. You couldn't see it, but that broke him for another 10 yards. Of course, Carson had that big drop early in the game. This foul to McGrath. McGrath going wide. Very difficult to try sideline to sideline against the speed that Tennessee has off the corner. Corey Terry, number 22, along with Wilson, all of those guys can run 4-6 or better. The guy who makes this play, though, is true freshman Gerard Hayden, number 48. Watch him get outside of Morgan's block. Turns him back inside because he knows there's a lot of orange shirts running from the inside. Corey Terry does a nice job getting up the field. That defensive end spot so hard to play against Vanderbilt because of the option threat. Second and 13. Allen over the middle to Morgan. Boy, he got popped. So did Damian Allen. Tennessee's really starting to get up the field on the pass. They're starting to sniff it out. Jonathan Brown, you can see Duff getting up the field. It's a hit. Number 97, Buck Buxton, making a start today. Making the most of his start. Ian built up number 50. Leonard Little was obviously the guy that delivered that pop to Morgan that knocked the ball free. Third down and 13. We'll call it third and 14. Over the middle, Alvin Duke down to the 35-yard line. And at this stage, you have to consider the possibility of this being four-down territory. This becomes four-down territory. You're down by two touchdowns. You need to keep your defense off the field. Even just a couple more, 30 or 40 seconds, will allow your defense to maybe get their legs back under it. For them possibly to roll out Damian Allen, get him on a corner so he has a run and pass threat because that's where he's good. Ed Lambert, their offensive coordinator, told us he's better rolling to his right, obviously, his right-handed quarterback. Vanderbilt's offense uh, getting the timeout with 4-0-1 remaining and a fourth down facing them, trailing by 14. Better than 106,000 on hand for what will be a fourth down for Vanderbilt. This has been their best drive to this point. Seven plays, 36 yards. Fourth down and four. We'll call it five. The option to McGrath. He's got the first down to the 25-yard line as they go with the option towards the boundary. Ten yards, and you see how important it was for McGrath and company. Tennessee had some defenders out there. You're going to see number 30, Corey Gaines, has a chance to make this play. That was the best chance that Vanderbilt had was to get Damian Allen out on the edge, either with a play-action pass or the option. The option has not been stopped all game long by Tennessee, and Jared McGrath makes Corey Gaines fall flat on his face, or he would have been tackled for a, for a lost yardage play. Now they fake the option and run a quick pass, but it was well read by Raynock Thompson. Incomplete intended for McGrath. Allen paid a severe price. Both Jonathan Brown and Corey Terry were all over it. Jonathan Brown's been kind of a pleasant surprise. They knew he was a great player, but they didn't realize he had 11 and a half sacks in him this year to lead the SEC. But a nice compliment since they had to move Leonard Little to that linebacker spot. Second and ten. Delay to McGrath. Top inside runner. Should have a first down. Leonard Little wraps him up. Oh, you can see now why Ed Lambert is so high, the offensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, on the toughness of Jared McGrath. Talked a lot about Jamal Lewis running between the tackles. Here's another true freshman in Jared McGrath. See how he loads, ru runs low to the ground fights through tackles you're not going to take him down unless you square him up great drive for Vanderbilt they can punch this in we got to hold the ball team 
This is his 12th carry of the day. It could be for 60 yards on the day and a touchdown this time. That was an in-your-face rivalry drive on a weekend where you see a lot of them intrastate rivalries. Vanderbilt letting Tennessee know that they're here to stay. You've got to figure that they had a little uh, discussion on the sideline, let's say, where they got these guys a little fired up for that drive. Some people say you measure the strength of a conference from the bottom up. Can you imagine what the record for Woody Woodenhofer's team would be were he not in the SEC? It's never easy. It's always tough. And this freshman is ready to do business the rest of the way. As Vanderbilt now only trails by one score against the third-ranked ball. 112 Division 1A teams. Also check out our plays of the game. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. Cedric Wilson reels in the kick and is ahead to the 23-yard line. Carlton Hall again involved in the tackle. As you look at the Vanderbilt scoring drive, 71 yards. McGrath probably three-fourths of that belonging to him and the 14-yard touchdown scamper to Kevin. They were just grinding it out that whole time. Off the line did a nice job. McGrath made a lot of plays himself. The key to that, though, is it left their defense on the bench. I'm sure they made a few adjustments. They started playing more zone on that last drive against Tennessee, expecting them maybe to come up, start pressuring uh, uh, Manning a little more, play a little more one-on-one -on, -one on the corner. From the 23, first and 10, Price and Nash are the receivers, and it's Marcus Nash in front of Davis. And against most teams, that quick pass, the quick hitch, that could go for 40 or 50 yards, and that would be into double coverage, but uh, not with Corey Chavis over there. How many times have you seen in the last couple of years Manning hits a guy on a quick pass, a guy like Marcus Nash makes one move and makes a cornerback miss, but not this guy. Corey Chavis is too good to miss those tackles. He's probably one of the surest tackles in defensive backfield in all of the country. Manning's numbers improving in a 21, 118 yards. Second and six. Lewis wrapped up by Duncan, but may have picked up the first down. Duncan is very strong. I mean, this is a young man that uh, can bench 430 pounds, 4640 speed, and the most instinctive player that Woody Woodenhopper has ever coached. Now, that is a bold <laughs> statement when wow. you think of all of the Pittsburgh Steelers that he had. Jack Ham, let's talk Lambert. Oh, he goes back a long way. And he mentioned those guys when talking about Duncan, guy he thinks will play for a long time on Sunday afternoon. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Lewis, again off of the favorite side for Tennessee when running the football, the left side. Duncan again involved along with Jay Stallworth on the stop. Coming into this game, we saw that their favorite side was the left side, but they've had more success today over the right side. Maybe they saw a little weakness on the right side of the Vanderbilt defense. But Tennessee, got to start thinking about controlling the clock a little bit, eating some time off. But to me, in the back of your mind, you got to start thinking also, how are we going to start getting number uh, 16 some good numbers? Good point. Right now, it's Lewis getting the number. His number being called time and time again. He's up to the 42-yard line. Appears to be a yard shy of the first down. Ryan All stopped him. He's over 130 yards now offensively. 138 yards on 26 carries. And many times, Manning makes that hot read and checks into that running play. You would think Manning, as a quarterback with all these great numbers, would be have the propensity maybe to call more of his own number, and I'm going to throw the ball. But our coaches said, actually, more of his audibles go to a running play when he sees that they're outnumbered, that the defense is outnumbered on one side. Off the right side, Lewis, look out. Needed one more block, could not get it from Nash. And it's up to the 45-yard line into Vanderbilt territory. 13 yards for Lewis as they continue to pound this Vanderbilt defense, which uh, its most exploitable area is its, is its front four. 
But at the end of the third, Vanderbilt still only a touchdown behind, trailing 17 to 10. We'll return to Neyland Stadium right after this message and a word from your local CBS station. 17-10 Tennessee leading as we open the fourth quarter. Final home game in the career of Peyton Manning. Heisman front runner. Vanderbilt trying to stave off what has been a Jamal Lewis oriented drive as we open the final period of play. Back to the cat and mouse. Linebackers walked up. Manning's checking. Goes to the fade and Nash again broke it off and Chavis has a pick. Vanderbilt gets the turnover they needed. We talked about it during the break. Talked about it during the break that they needed a turnover and they made it come true. Chavis read Manning the whole way. He ran the route for Marcus Nash. Nash, for some reason, didn't think he was running the fade route. Chavis thought he was, so he went and covered the route that he thought was going to be run. That's an amazing way. That's amazing that he studied that much. But afterwards, a little too much French pastry. He did a little dance and will get a celebration penalty. There's an interception on the play. After the play is dead, unsportsmanlike conduct on the white team. The penalty be half the distance to the goal, first and ten. As good as the play was, no need for that if you're a senior. Really hurts his team. He made an incredible play. Now he backs them up. The crowd's going to start getting into it now. Making it even more difficult on that end of the stadium. Right up the gut, and it's McGrath again. Boy, is he running tough. Up to the 26-yard line, Corey Gaines drops him a 15-yard pickup. You've got to start to think that Tennessee's defense is getting a little tired. He's just running right up the middle here. Nice job on Leonard Little. Took him right out of the play. Jared McGrath, 15 yards. He's starting to find those little seams that he couldn't find in the first and second quarter. Starting to wear down this Tennessee defense. Uh, he has 77 yards on the ground. Last year, there were minus a yard on the ground in this game. Allen trying to roll to the wide side of the field, and uh, number one got in the way. Leonard Little. Out of Asheville, North Carolina, 6'3", 250, and can really run. This after a torn ACL a year ago. Damian Allen would do himself a favor. If he doesn't tuck that ball so early, Little has to play the pass a little longer. Because he tucked it while he was still deep in the backfield, it allows him to come over and make the tackle a lot quicker and put a harder hit on you as well. Second and eight. Again, off tackle McGrath. And it pops three for another big game to the 47. Corey Gaines runs him down. An 18-yard run as he reaches for the century mark on the ground. A little bit of zone blocking by number 76. Blake Codry, the left tackle, and number 78, Michael Saltzman. We see him just driving orange shirts off the ball. It's so easy to run behind guys when they're getting that push off the line of scrimmage because it creates the seams between the defenders. Interception of the day for Goodrich, the third Vanderbilt turnover. Wayne Goodrich again, just in a little zone defense. You can see the linebackers dropping off. Doing a nice job of just stepping in front of Andy's receiver. You really have to question the play. You really have to question the call down seven. 17-10 Tennessee. Woody Woodnopper's team has picked up a couple of turnovers today. And on the last two occasions, they turned it right back through the air. There's the hitch out to Fairless Price. Davis in front of it, but he gets a good block. First down, Tennessee, as they get it into Vanderbilt territory. And again, uh, Price sets sail. A long way to run for an offensive lineman. They're just going to run the little wide receiver screen. You see Cozy Coleman. Getting his big 320 pounds out there on Chavis. Chavis, smart man. I'm going to back up. Let, let this guy run 
run around me. Nice job by Price. What he did was he waited for Coleman to get there. He knew he was going to take a little while to get there, but he, he knew that big man would get there with him. Fred Benson is down, and uh, they're checking on him right now. Going back to what we said going to the break about uh, the decision to throw and having the interception, you know, Woody Woodenhofer's team had been so, so successful on the ground, particularly with our option series. Sometimes offensive coordinators get caught up and say, well, we haven't thrown the ball in a while. You know, we've been running the ball down the field, so we have to keep it balanced, keep them honest, and throw the ball. Well, you got Damian Allen, who's not really a great passer, and sometimes he's going to just watch Elliott Carson. He watched him down the whole field, and Goodridge made him pay again. Earlier today, he did the exact same thing. McGrath's last runs, his five rushes, he ran for 10, 11, 14, 15, and 18 yards. You've got to wonder why they decided to throw the football. They have not been able to stop the, the uh, run up the middle. They haven't been able to stop the toss sweep. They haven't been able to stop the option. Yet they want to go back and throw the ball. My thing is, if you're doing something right, just keep doing it. Yeah, if you're going to lose, lose with your best shot, right? There goes Lewis. He's usually a good option. Down to the 45-yard line. The carry. Sort of like the, the baseball pitcher who's uh, got a 102 mile an hour fastball and throws a hanging slider with the game on the line. You just start licking your chops. Yep. And that's what Peyton, Peyton Manning and his volunteers have to do. They have to take advantage of what they've been given. The game turned around, the momentum went back to Vanderbilt. Manning has to get those TD passes up. He has one, which he hadn't done for two years against Vanderbilt. Second and seven. For the jugular. Runs over Batten at the 21 yard line. Yeah, the freshman can't applaud. That, that's allowed. Lewis does a lot of work on his cell, by his cell. You have to credit his offensive line. They've done such a nice job. A little draw play, finds that seam. And he's getting help downfield. Jermaine Copeland fighting and scratching for everything he's worth. If Jermaine Copeland doesn't get that block, that's a 15-yard gain instead of a 25-yard. Lewis has more yards than the Vanderbilt offense. And he has more this time. Inside the 15 to the 14. It's as if the Heisman front runner has said, big fella, young guy, Take me to the promised land. Take me to the land. He has 187 yards now on 30 carries. I've known this young fellow since uh, he was uh, a 10-year-old. Peyton Manning and uh, his decision to give it to Jamal Lewis in this game at this time has been very fruitful. Puts this one on the deck. Vanderbilt may have it. They do. Vanderbilt will not go away. A right, big turnover. Ryan Alls, number 98, comes away with it. Philip Fulmer can't believe it. But as a good head coach, he knows he has to send his defense on the field ready to play. That's the hardest thing to do when, when you get that quick turnover. Just a mishandled handoff. We've seen that twice today. Put right in the bread box by Peyton Manning. Jamal Lewis just has to cover that ball up. He is a freshman, and that is a turnover. Punctuating a Thanksgiving holiday weekend in the Smoky Mountains, Tennessee, with a seven-point lead, hopeful of an SEC title game opportunity, a potential national championship opportunity. But business is not done yet against rival Vanderbilt. McGrath behind the line of scrimmage at the seven yard line, Corey Terry leading the charge, the junior from Warrington, North Carolina. A loss of five. Buck Buxton, a uh, JC transfer. Oklahoma AM gets up the field outside of the block of Condry, number 76, caused that play. Corey Terry, of course, finished it off, but that was all done by Buck Buxton. This is his senior year, one of 16 playing for the final time in Neyland Stadium. series and Damian Allen breaks it past the 30 to the 35 yard line which again brings to mind what had been so successful prior to that interception moments ago if you are Woody Woodenhofer you're on the phone right now saying now Ed Lambert my offensive coordinator 
That's what I'm talking about. Go to the option. Give the ball to McGrath. They haven't stopped it all day long. What makes you think they're going to stop it now? Allen, if, if Goodrich is not there, that's six points. Goodrich is playing a great game for Tennessee on defense. Already has two picks and possibly saved the touchdown on that play. That's 27 yards at the 36-yard line. First and 10. McGrath, nothing doing. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. You know, we saw the reaction of Philip Fulmer on the sidelines after that turnover by Jamal Lewis. But he was so encouraging to the players as they came off the field. He knows all too well that defending the option is something they just don't practice week in and week out in college football any longer. The SEC, it used to be very strong, strongly used, but now it's just kind of a, a gimmick. Looks like Al Wilson's back down on the field. There you so go. you're right. That, that is one of those offenses that if you don't see it on a consistent basis, it's very difficult to get your guys to play. It, it's assignment football and defense. If you go back earlier this year, he got help from LSU when they beat Florida. What was the play Florida couldn't defend? The option series. We'll be back. It'll be different this year. A game that looked like it could have gone Tennessee's way has now started to swing back towards Vanderbilt. We could have another thriller. Second down and 10. Second back is Jimmy Williams. Looking for the corner and makes it. Out of bounds with a first down beyond the 45 at the 46-yard line. Ten-yard pickup for Williams. Noel, Corey Noel, number nine, running him out. Ed Lambert, the offensive coordinator, told us they were going to do a lot of misdirection against Tennessee because of their propensity to flow very quickly to the ball. You can see Jimmy Williams took a little chance there. As Leonard Leonard, number one, was kind of knocked out, he decided to try to outrun him and did, got the first down. Andy's last three possessions, including this one, 71, 35 yards before an interception. They're up to 31 yards on this drive, so they steadily moved the football. Option series again, this time snuffed out by Tennessee. Let's go down to Mike Harris. Mike? Well, on the Vanderbilt side, there is no quit. The coaches kept imploring their players to keep going. They were still in the game, and the players, they believe them now. Uh, Colorado, of course, uh, came back against Nebraska, made it difficult for them, and now Woody Woodenhopper trying to do the same against Tennessee. And you talk of how the landscape would change if, in fact, Vanderbilt were to do the unthinkable this afternoon. It would change in a very big way, both in the SEC and nationally. Morgan, the first back through. At the 50-yard line, may have got to the 49. Coming up next, Syracuse and Miami, the Orangemen hopeful of a Fiesta Bowl berth as the Big East Alliance member. And Miami trying to become bowl eligible with a victory after a miserable one in four start. As much uh, as an impact as this game has on the Alliance, that one has almost just as much. Syracuse with a win, goes to the Fiesta Bowl with a loss, they don't. Craig James said it best at halftime, the Fiesta Bowl choice, the fourth pick, impacts the entire landscape for the bowl season. Third down and five. Again to the air, and it's batted down. There he is, Buck Buxton. A nice play early, got up, got up the field. What you teach your defensive lineman against the quick drop, when you know you're not going to get there, read the quarterback's eyes. As soon as he sets and starts to throw, time your jump. Nice job by Buck Buxton in his timing. Very easily knocked that pass down. You'll see him working on Salsman number 78, getting blocked. I'm not going to get there. Let me get my hands up and try to knock it down. Big play by Buck Buxton. It's two on that one drop. He was looking for Fleming at tight end. Now Webb's to run it away as Mandy tries to play field position football. Their catch called for by Fair at the 15. Incidental contact, no flag, and a good no call. Little theatrics by Terry Fair. <laughs> and war, particularly down here in Tennessee. My friend, the old offensive lineman from Washington, remembers all too well these situations. You want a first down because Woodenhofer's counting on a three and out, isn't it? His defense has had some time to rest. They've had some drives on offense. He expects to come up blitz, maybe get a turnover again. This game's going back and forth quite a few times in this third quarter. Manning from the 15-yard line. Three-step drop, a little 
it can go. That was loose in the air. They will rule it an incompleted forward pass. His arm was moving forward. That was very nearly a turnover and just what Woodenhopper was hoping for. And we have a marker down. Like Anthony Jordan, the linebacker coming from the blind side of Manning as he rolled to his left. Remember, all of these linebackers run very well. Holding on the defense. Oh. Only 10 yards and an automatic first down. Well, that's a tough one to take. Tennessee's going to run a little rollout to the left side. Manning sliding away from pressure, and it is Anthony Jordan just lays a lick on Dave Manning. But this guy, he never ceases to amaze me with his toughness. Just gets right back up, goes back to the huddle, says, hey, you were holding anyway. I got a first down. Lewis. Up to the 29-yard line. Gain of four, maybe five in the arms of Jamie Duncan. It was interesting talking to Duncan and uh, Carlton Hall about their experiences, and we asked them, boy, how tough is it when you play so well? You're number one ranked defensively in the conference, eighth in the nation, and yet 0-17 in conference play. And, and it's amazing how they've been able to, to stay motivated this year. And one of the harder things to do also when, you're, when your offense is struggling like Vanderbilt has done, you can't get angry at them. You can't start pointing fingers. You've got to stay together as a team. He said, we've got a lot riding on this team. We would like to be the best defense in the NFL for the first time in this season. That's a lot of motivation. Lewis again burrows ahead for two, maybe three yards. They, in fact, pointed to last year's game against Florida. Even in defeat, they had Danny Werfel sack and uh, Steve Spurrier <laughs> throwing a visor, and they said that, that, that would be a, a memory etched forever in the back of their mind. And they've done such a nice job on the Van D will easily finish first in the SEC. They could they could afford to give up 506 yards today, and Tennessee will not even sniff that. Third down and three. They're 50% uh, from third down conversions this afternoon. Off the rollout, Bryson. That has been there the last two weeks. John Bryson to the 40-yard line. He has the speed of a tailback playing fullback. Raheem Batten with the saving tackle. The reason Bryson has the speed of a tailback because he was a tailback before the emergence of Jamal Lewis. Legitimate 4-4 speed at your fullback spot. That's why he is so dangerous out of the backfield as a receiver. He's fourth on the team in receptions. That's his 29th of the season. Junior from Franklin High School, Franklin, North Carolina. You see the total offensive numbers now, almost double that of Vanderbilt. The clock ticking with 6.15 showing in the fourth quarter. Tennessee that far away from a date in the SEC championship game against Auburn. Great play by Ryan Alls coming through to trip up. Alls a redshirt, excuse me. Alls a redshirt freshman from Lebanon, Tennessee. Very happy to have him on the defensive front. They said they told us he brings an active an activeness into the middle that they didn't have before because he can move around so well. Well, he just lifted Jamal Lewis almost in a somersault position in making that tackle. Play fake, Manning looking, and uh, overshoots the intended receiver, Marcus Nash. And again, Manning gets the deck. Carlton Hall with that pressure. Carlton Hall is a blitzing linebacker. You see him kind of creeping up. Number 34 runs right through Bryce in number 24 and continues on to Manny. Manny felt the pressure and had to get rid of it very quickly. The best seat in the house today is inside the Bud One airship. Aerial ambassador for the King of Beers. Third down and 10 for Tennessee. Again, the rollout. He's looking for Bryson. Now shoots it long, and it's almost picked by Stallworth. He appeared to be looking at first glance for Nash, but he was taken away, and then Jay Stallworth almost had an interception. Bill Fulmer, Fulmer's got to start getting a little nervous now. His defense has been out on the field a lot since the middle of that third quarter. They're starting to get tired. 
Vanderbilt starting to have some success running the ball. Vanderbilt didn't get a three and out, but very close to it, making Tennessee punt. Hogue to punt it away. Duke standing at his 10. He'll let this one go, and it gets a Tennessee bounce. Bandy will have to go nearly the distance. Kathleen wants a better life for her child. Found on CBS. From the two-yard line, Vanderbilt sets up, and it will be very noisy. Crowd's been kind of subdued all day. They know how important this is. That will quiet a crowd, although the hit is a tough one to take, and McGrath is still on the deck at the 11-yard line. Two yards shy of the first down. Terry Fair undercut him there. Jared McGrath having a lot of success in the second half running the ball. Nice job by number 76, Connery. Just pinned his man inside. Fair comes up, makes a nice tackle. You wonder if he just got the wind knocked out of him as he landed flat on his back. Wow. That could be a tailbone or anything. That, that could not feel good. The good news is he did not land on the neck. Way he's limping, it could have been his knee that Fair hit. Second and two. Williams. Not a bad concept, but it did not work, obviously. Slow in developing, Terry Fair right there. Jimmy Williams has been nicked all year. He got a concussion against LSU. He had a sprained ankle earlier. And with as much as Jared McGrath has played, you got to start to wonder if Jimmy Williams is still slowed a little bit. You can see he's just not cutting like you've seen earlier in the season. He's such a good runner, so fast, but he just doesn't look like he has that extra step. Yeah, there. you don't get a feeling that he can do for you what McGrath can, at least today. Morgan stretching ahead. No one blew the whistle, Dad. Now we're, now we're being told, yes, the whistle did, in fact, blow. As he stretched the ground, obviously cannot cause a fumble. We'll see where forward progress netted Paul Morgan, the senior from Portland, Mississippi. It's fourth, and one. It's fourth down and less than a yard. Paul Morgan made this very interesting right at the very end. He knew he had to get out there, and he stretches it for every single inch, just not quite enough. No fumble, of course, as the ball hits the curve and pops out. Whistle was a little late in coming, but it's uh, certainly a good call. Joe Webb to punt it away with 2.57 to play. Vanderbilt can utilize their timeouts and hope for a defensive stop as the Volunteers take it after the fair catch by Terry Fair. At the 45-yard line, a 33-yard boot for Webb. Again, a reminder, the SEC Eastern Division title at stake, a loss by the Volunteers today, would mean a three-way tie, but in the third tiebreaker, Georgia would get the nod and play Auburn in the SEC championship game. So this is by far and away not a done deal. And uh, Peyton Manning more aware of that than anyone at this stage. What percentage of the Georgia Bulldogs do you think are watching this football game today? Of <laughs> well, the few that aren't getting ready for Tech, Georgia and Georgia Tech that are playing. Certainly monitoring it, I'm sure. Running 159 yards, an interception and a pick. He did score on the ground once. Lewis down to the 42-yard line. Tennessee, very happy just to pound Jamal Lewis. They have to control the ball. Here comes Vanderbilt starting to milk the clock a little bit with some timeouts. They have one remaining after that timeout. and tradition of Tennessee football and college football in general. Something uh, etched in the matter of Peyton Manning today and forever. And he knows that this drive with a first down could all but end it. See the urgency getting the guys in the huddle? Come on, guys. This, this game rests on our shoulders right now. Second and six. Lewis wrapped up by Duncan. 
and Jason Hill. And another quick timeout taken. That only took about three seconds off the clock. Nine tackles on the day for Jamie Duncan. Don't forget, coming up next, number 16 Syracuse against Miami. So much at stake in that game. There are seven bowl eligible teams in the SEC in terms of six Division 1A wins. And uh, believe me, a lot of them are rooting for a Syracuse win today so that the Big East may not have another bowl eligible team. Let's flash back to September 3rd, 1994 and listen to John Ward's call of Peyton Manning's very first game as a collegian. Listen to this. For Tennessee, the quarterback will be number 16, Peyton Manning, 6'5", 207 freshman from New Orleans. Three weeks later, Manning threw his first collegiate touchdown against Mississippi State, a 76-yarder to Kendrick Jones. The rest is give him six history, in the words of John Ward. He got six a lot of times in his career here at Tennessee. By the way, our congratulations to John Ward, the man for whom this booth is named. This is the John Ward Press Box. He and Bill Anderson, his counterpart, celebrating 30 years of broadcasting Tennessee volunteer football. And his number's not very impressive in this game, not up to what he usually does, averaging three, over 300 yards a game. But that's not what matters in this ballgame. They knew that coming in, and they wanted to utilize Jamal Lewis, which they've done very effectively. and it's a big one. He brings it in. It's a first down. Well, you can see the anxiety on Peyton's face. They'll have to give it up. As they roll towards Bryce, and he's kind of stumbling the whole way. Fake the block on Hall. Watch him just start to stumble. And he never got his feet underneath of him. That's why he dropped the ball. Such a competitor. The guy knows how big that play was. He knows all about the history. Hard on his teammates sometimes, but nobody's harder on themselves than Peyton Manning. And uh, sharing the wealth with the talent that surrounds him, it's always in the back of his mind. Hogue will now punt it away, and uh, Vanderbilt will get one last crack. From the 10, Duke. Up near the 20-yard line with a 9-yard return. Next Saturday, the road to the Final Four begins with a season premiere of NCAA basketball on CBS Sports, an early season powerhouse. Tubby Smith's Kentucky Wildcats battling Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central time. Well, Tim, it all comes down to this. Two minutes, 16 seconds, Vanderbilt down by seven. No timeouts. Defense has to step up. Looks like Woody Woodenhofer's decision to not go for it on fourth and one was the correct one. No timeouts, a little shovel pass to Duke. Could not make the sideline. The clock will continue to run at the 23-yard line. That's the time remaining separating Tennessee from an Eastern Division Championship and a spot in the SEC title game at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta next Saturday. McGrath drops it. Good to see him back in the game after the injury moments ago. In fact, they had a second and two. You think if McGrath's in there, Vanderbilt may have held on to the football. Offensive line of Vanderbilt's done a pretty good job all day of getting protection on Damian Allen. Here they do a nice job. McGrath, if he catches it and gets out of bounds, it's a first down. The clock stops. Maybe heard some footsteps from Goodrich, who's had a great game, number 23 for Tennessee. into the air again and the anticipation for Manning perhaps just to play away Bill Duff got his big mid up there senior from Delron New Jersey again good protection by the offensive line there's Duff again if you're not going to get there time your jump good coaching by the Tennessee defensive coaches good discipline by their defensive line fourth and six it all comes down to this for an Eastern Division title for Tennessee, should they hold here. 
Locked into the air, loose ball. Incomplete. They'll root it an incompleted forward pass. Jonathan Brown comes through, and the Volunteers are on their way to the SEC Championship. Jonathan Brown, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jonathan Brown's been quiet all day. We haven't even called out his name or his number. Big number 91 comes up with the biggest play of the day. Fourth and six. Again, one of those things where you're not going to get there. Start reaching with your outside arm. That gets you closer to the quarterback. Clay Cosby, number 76, had a nice block, but Brown just got that big arm over there and knocked the ball away from Allen to seal the deal. Peyton Manning takes the knee. Crowd doesn't like it, but... Uh, that the way that Philip Fulmer and uh, Peyton Manning have run this program has been with class and grace. And the career numbers on Manning to this point. And I believe this strongly. It didn't matter necessarily the numbers today because you look at the overall picture. If he doesn't lose from here on in, the Heisman Trophy should belong to Manning. It's hard to argue with those kind of numbers. You're right. The fans get a little antsy because they're taking the knee, but... Philip Fulmer and his staff, Peyton Manning, told us yesterday how much they respect this Vanderbilt defense. And you can see why. Vanderbilt, it rises to the occasion every year to play these guys. Manning has never been able to put up big numbers. In three years, he's only thrown one touchdown pass. And you can see the pain of Tavares Hope. These guys fought and scratched. This was their whole season. They said, you know what? This is our orange ball. And you can see the pain in Woody Woodenhoffer's face. The chess match between Woodenhopper and Manning lived up to the billing for Philip Fulmer. I'll say it again. He did not have to go through Gainesville to get to the title game. There was a lot at stake for Philip Fulmer as head coach of this program to get it done with Peyton Manning back for a fourth year. And he's going to get there. Manning probably a little frustrated about his performance, but look at the joy that it brings that these guys are going to play for the SEC East. They're going to play, represent the SEC East in the championship against all. Peyton Manning, Newman High School, New Orleans, Louisiana. How proud he's made his father, Archie, and mom, Olivia. And let's uh, let's go down to Mike Harris, who's got the Heisman Trophy front runner with him. Peyton, what are your thoughts at this moment? Well, I'm extremely excited. You know, it's what we play for every single season. You know, obviously we got beat by Florida, but had an opportunity to win the SEC East. We did that today. We're excited going to Atlanta to play Auburn. How nervous were you when you were down? Well, I wasn't really nervous. It was just a matter of time before we started making some plays. Vanderbilt has a great defense, and they were stopping us early on. And they gave us trouble all day, but we had to make some plays to win the game, and we ended up doing that. What kind of day did you think? And did you visualize this day happening like this? Well, it's always a tough game against Vanderbilt. You know, both teams are going to play hard. It's a fierce rivalry between the two teams. And the kind of defense they play, they're going to give up some things, and they're going to make some plays. We had to be patient. We turned the ball over too many times. We kept them in it, but a win's a win. All right. Back to you, Tim. All right, Mike, and our thanks to you, Peyton Manning. You embody all that college football is about. For Ed Cunningham and for Mike Harris, Tim Brando so happy to say so long to Peyton for his regular season with a victory today.